Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have sine of pi cosine x is equal to cosine of pi sine x. So if you wanted to try this problem yourself, you can go ahead and pause the video here and then uh, check it out later. Okay, let's get started. So we have sine and cosine on different sides. So let's go ahead and write down the left hand side as a cosine. So I can write cosine of, since the two angles that are complementary uh, will have the sine equal their cosines, I can just go ahead and write this as cosine of pi over 2 minus pi cosine x, which then equals cosine of pi sine x. Okay, so that we now have uh, cosine on both sides. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and solve this equation. Uh, if cosine alpha equals cosine beta, then I can just go ahead and write down this as pi over 2 minus pi cosine x is going to equal. Now, we have two situations here. Either the two angles are equal or one of them is the inverse of the other. So what I can write then is I can just use the plus minus sign here for pi sine x. And then just add multiples of um, 2 pi, or you can just add even multiples of pi. Okay, so here n is an integer. So this equation is satisfied with the plus minus signs. So we can just go ahead and uh, put these together, you know, the cosine and sine together. Uh, since uh, we have the plus minus sign here, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this to the other side and then divide everything by pi, okay? And then the pi is gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna be getting uh, cosine of x plus minus sine of x. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract two and pi from both sides. So it's going to look like one half minus, since the pi canceled out because we divided everything by pi, it's gonna be one half minus two n, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a common denominator and write this as 1 minus 4n all over 2. Okay. Now, uh, we do have a sum or difference here. So in order to be able to use the sum to product formula, let's go ahead and write down the sine x as cosine of pi over 2 minus x. And then this equals 1 minus 4n over 2. Here n is an integer, so we know that. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the formula for the sum to product formula. And this is going to give us, this should give us 2 times. So what we're supposed to do is basically we are supposed to add these and divide by 2 and then subtract them and divide by 2. So when we add them, the x is going to cancel out. So we're going to be getting um, half of pi over 2, which is pi over 4. And then from their difference, we're going to be getting, because of the plus minus situation, we're going to be getting two variations here. It's going to be x plus minus pi over 4. Because of the division by 2, we have to have a pi over 4 there. And this is going to equal 1 minus 4n over 2, where n is an integer. Okay? So our equation is actually uh, kind of getting simpler here because we know the value of cosine pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. So if you just go ahead and write down root 2 over 2 here, the 2 cancels out, so we end up with a root 2 here as a coefficient. If you go ahead and divide both sides by that, then we end up with the cosine of x plus minus pi over 4 being equal to 1 minus 4n divided by 2 root 2. Okay? So our equation actually really simplified at this point. Uh, we end, ended up with a single cosine, okay? And now we're going to consider it both, of course, because it's a plus minus. But one thing to remember, n is an integer, and in order for this equation to have a meaning, we have to have that the cosine of the angle needs to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, right? So it can't be outside that interval. So we have to have that 1 minus 4n over 2 root 2, is between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. So let's go ahead and write that down. And obviously, we can just go ahead and multiply everything by 2 root 2, which is a positive quantity, so it doesn't really matter. The sign stays the same. And then we get this. And then after 
a couple of manipulations, which I can kind of spare you the trouble here, because what we need to do is I would probably just go ahead and multiply everything by negative one, reverse the inequality, but something interesting about this is that these numbers are not gonna change because they're opposites. So all you have to do is actually replace one minus four n with four n minus one, and then add one and divide by four, and you're gonna end up getting something like this. n is between one minus two root two, divided by four and one plus two root two divided by four, okay? We know that n is an integer, and if you go ahead and look at the values here, the only possible n value is actually gonna be n equals zero, so n equals zero satisfies this inequality, and from here, we get that cosine of x plus minus from here, pi over four, is equal to one over two root two, because if you plug in the n value here, that's what you're gonna be getting. And that will be, if you rationalize the denominator, this is gonna equal root two over four, okay? Now, we have the cosine of an angle equals root two over four, but root two over four is not really a special value. So what we need to do here is actually, we need to name the angle whose uh, cosine is root two over four. So we're gonna be using the inverse trigonometric function here. So let theta equal the inverse cosine of root two over four. You can also write this as arc cosine, as you know, cosine inverse and arc cosine are the same thing. So from here, we can write this equation as x plus minus pi over four, because now we are able to write basically this equation as cosine of x plus minus pi over four is equal to cosine of theta, because by definition, cosine theta is root two over four, so we can replace root two over four with cosine theta here. And then from the equality of cosines, we can say that x plus minus pi over four is equal to plus minus theta, because you know that in the first and fourth quadrant, cosine is positive, so those e angles are gonna have theta and negative theta are gonna have the same cosine. You can also use the fact that cosine is an even function. So cosine theta is equal to cosine negative theta. And then this will equal plus minus two. Now we don't wanna use the same variable. Well, we could, I guess, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use K instead of the variable N. And this should be two K multiplied by pi, okay? Okay. And then, of course, our goal is to find x. We're trying to find x here, so let's go ahead and isolate x by adding, subtracting pi over four. Basically, just put it on the other side. You can just go ahead and write this as, um, because that's a pi over four, you can basically write that plus minus pi over four, plus minus theta, plus minus two. I'm sorry, this should not be a plus minus. That should just be a plus sign. It shouldn't be plus minus. There we go. Okay. Then, so we're going to be having that theta here. And then this was a plus sign. So it's going to be plus 2k times pi. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do here is write the solution. Write the solution in terms of uh, a parameter. Of course, k is an integer here. k is an integer and theta is the angle whose cosine is root two over four. And this will be our solution for the equation. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, and comment, and see you in the next video. Until then, you have a good one. Bye-bye.